I want to invite us to pray again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, thank you for, for seeing us and for knowing everything about us, for knowing what, what we've done and what we haven't done, what we will do, what we won't do. God, thank you for choosing to, to love us and to call us by name to become your saints in this generation. We ask this prayer, Heavenly Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. To be saints. That, that is the invitation from Jesus for each and every single one of us in this room. I've been so inspired by the witness of the men and the women, the male and the female saints who have preceded us in our walk toward eternity, learning from them how I can grow with him, with Jesus. Most recently, I've been inspired by a woman from the fourth century. Her name is Saint Mary of Edessa. She was a, an anchoress and a, a hermit. As a young child, her, her parents passed away, and so her uncle, who was a, a monk, Father Abraham, he, he took her in, and he began to teach her about Jesus, and, and she learned about Jesus and the teachings of the church, and she fell in love with Jesus at a young age, and so later on in life, she herself became this, this hermit, this holy woman of God. But even though she was pursuing the Lord who was pursuing her, like all of us, she had her, her vices, she had her bad habits, she had her struggles. And, and at some point, we don't know when, but at some point in her life as a hermit, as an anchoress, she encountered a monk and they engaged in an inappropriate relationship with each other. And after they had this inappropriate relationship with each other, she felt so much shame, she felt so much pain. She condemned herself. She listened to the voice of the accuser, and instead of reorienting her attention to the face of God, who loved her unconditionally, she ran away. She ran away from her home. She ran away from her faith. She ran away from Jesus. And she entered into a brothel where she lived and where she worked for, for two years as a woman of the night. And for two years, her, her uncle, Father Abraham, he prayed for her and he fasted for her and he longed to find out where she was, where is his spiritual daughter. And after two years of praying and fasting, he got news of where she was living in the brothel. And so he went to the brothel and he said, my daughter, please come back home. My daughter, come back home. And she said, no, Father, I cannot come back home. You don't understand what I've done. And he said, my daughter, please come back home. The Lord's love and mercy is for you. You are not to be identified by your sin. The only sin will be for you to stay here. Please come back to Jesus. And eventually she reluctantly came back to the Lord and eventually she reluctantly not only came back to the Lord, but, but she repented and she believed that, yeah, he did love her. And he did want her. And she began to live as a hermit, again, as an anchoress in the community. And what happened was very beautiful and very powerful. The people in the community, many of them, they struggled with lust. They didn't want to struggle with lust, but they did. That was their thing. And now that they knew her story, her testimony, her witness, they were drawn to go to her because they could trust her because she understood them. And her, her wounds, her, her mistakes, her, her sins of her past became a wellspring of mercy for the men and women in her community. And the Lord used her to draw them back to him. That this all happened because she encountered the love of Jesus Christ through the witness of her uncle, this monk, Father Abraham, who is now 
Saint Abraham, and she is Saint Mary of Edessa. She encountered Jesus in him. And we know it was Jesus who she encountered in him because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the way that she encountered Jesus is the way that Jesus wants us to encounter him today because that's the way that Jesus encountered his apostles. He encountered his disciples. He encountered the men and women in sacred scripture 2,000 years ago. I want to invite us to, to, to look at the life of, of St. Peter and his relationship with Jesus Christ. The first time that, that Peter followed Jesus, it wasn't whenever Jesus called him in the Gospel of Luke while he was fishing. We heard it in today's Gospel at Mass. The very first time that, that Peter encountered Jesus, it was through John the Baptist who said, Behold the Lamb, and, and Andrew, he ran and he went to see Jesus, and he came back to Peter and said, Peter, you've got to come and see him. You've got to come and meet him. And Peter went and encountered Christ, and then he stayed with him. We don't know how long, but Peter stayed with Jesus. He spent time with Jesus, and at some point of spending time with Jesus, he walked away. Like many of us, our first time encountering Jesus, perhaps it was through our parents or, or through our, our school. We encountered the Lord through, through someone else who pointed us to Jesus, and, and we spent some time with Jesus in, in the church, but after a while, we too walked away. And so, so now Peter is, is fishing. He's going back to his way of life. He's trying to, to make money. He's trying to do things on his own terms. Following Jesus didn't work out for Peter the first time. And so now he's just going to fish. He's not very successful fishing. And Jesus is, is walking. And we read this in the Gospel of Luke. As Jesus is walking, there's a crowd of people. And they're following after Jesus, hanging on every word that he had to say. But guess who wasn't in that crowd of people who were listening to Jesus? Peter. Peter wasn't in the church, he wasn't in the synagogue, Peter was on the boat, he was fishing. And Jesus sees Peter fishing, not successful. And Jesus, he goes, he goes to Peter and, and Peter says, depart from me, I'm a sinner. Why would he say that? Probably because he just got caught sinning. He was trying to catch fish. He was not successful. He was probably very frustrated. He was not so happy and we all know that Peter... He struggled with wrath. He had a cursing problem. Remember three years later after he walks with Jesus, after he does ministry with Jesus, he's in the garden of Gethsemane with Jesus. And what does the, the scripture tell us? Peter began to curse. He began to curse while he was in the presence of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. He got a sword out and he cut someone's ear off. He was violent and then he abandoned Jesus. If that's what Peter was like three years after walking with Jesus, what was Peter like three years before? Here he is, fishing, not successful. He's probably cursing James and John. Maybe he's beating them up. He's filled with wrath and anger and frustration. And Jesus sees him. And Jesus is not afraid to approach him. Jesus walks to Peter. May I come in your boat? Come and follow me. So, so Peter does. Peter, Peter starts to follow him, like many of us, right? We struggle with our vices and our bad habits and our mistakes, and the Lord, he comes to us and he invites us to walk with him, and so Peter starts to walk with him. For three years, he walks with him, he prays with him, he studies, he learns from Jesus. He follows in the dust of the master. Peter is invited to, to walk on water. He's in, invited to perform miracles in the name of Jesus. Peter has an apparition of Moses and Elijah. He hears the Father's voice on the top of Mount Tabor. All these wonderful experiences and encounters Peter has with Jesus. Many of us, same has happened. Yeah, you know what, in the midst of our mess, in the midst of our brokenness, we've been invited to discipleship, we've been invited to a Bible study, we've been invited to seek, to a conference, to a retreat, and we've come, and, and since the retreat, or since the conference, or since the small group study, we've been growing, and we've been having encounters with the Lord, and it's been very beautiful. And then the Lord asked Peter, Peter, I, I want to invite you, I want to invite you to come and to sit and to watch and to pray. For one hour in the Garden of Gethsemane, just sit, watch, and pray. And Peter says, of course I could do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. 
And, and Peter goes to, to sit and to watch and to pray, but what does he do? And, and instead of being obedient to the invitation from Christ, he chooses to sleep. Now he's sleeping and Jesus goes to him and says, Peter, if you don't get up and pray, you will fall into temptation. How many of this has this been our experience as well? The Lord invites us to be intentional, to be consistent in our relationship with him, to pray. And then there are days where we just get really busy or exhausted or we put too many things on our calendar and we don't, we don't spend time with Jesus. And what happens? We begin to fall into our vices. We fall into our bad habits because prayer suppresses our vices. And so because Peter doesn't, doesn't pray, he ends up falling into his vices. Jesus, he goes away and he prays again and we know that he prays like, Father, remove the chalice if it be your will but not my will but your will be done. But Jesus also, he said something else while he was in the garden praying. Not just for Peter and the other apostles but for you and I. While he was talking to his father, while the apostles were sleeping, while the apostles were being disobedient, while the apostles were being inattentive to him. Do you know what he said to the father about them? He said, Father, they are your gift to me. They, they weren't focused in prayer. They weren't being obedient to his invitation. They weren't being disciplined in their discipleship. And when Jesus spoke to the father, when he spoke to Abba about his apostles, he said, they are your gift to me. And you and I, we, we too, we are invited by that same Jesus to also to sit and, and to watch and to pray. But you and I, we like Peter, like the other apostles, we might be overwhelmed with distractions or get caught up in other things and not focused or maybe aren't so obedient to what he's asking of us. And do you know what he says about us? Even whenever we are struggling, even whenever we choose otherwise, he looks to the Father and says those same words, Father, they are your gift to me. They're a gift. Not for what they have or haven't done, not for what they will or won't do, but that is who they are in my eyes. Father, they are your gift to me. And after Jesus Christ tells the Father that Peter's a gift, Judas comes and betrays Jesus with a kiss. Jesus is arrested and Peter and James and Matthew and Thomas abandoned Jesus. They run away. And then Peter is following Jesus at, at a distance, and he's, he's by a campfire, and he denies Jesus. Not once, not twice, but three times. And Jesus is stripped, he's cursed, he's spit upon, he's beaten. He's crucified and he dies. And Peter doesn't show up. On the third day, Jesus Christ, he rises from the dead and he goes to encounter Peter and the others where they were at. And what's the first thing that Jesus Christ said to Peter and the others when he saw them? Was it, I told you so? Like, I told you. I, I told you that you were going to abandon me, all of you. And I told you, Peter, that you were going to deny me not once, not twice, but three times. Is that what he said? No. The first thing that he said to them was, peace be with you. Peace be with you. He gave his spirit to them whose sins you forgive are forgiven, whose sins you retain are retained. Peter, here are the kings of the kingdom. And Peter, he hears Jesus saying, peace be with you. But, but if Peter's anything like us, he was probably thinking, yeah, maybe you could say peace be with you to, to John, you know, because John actually came back to the cross or maybe to the others because the others, they didn't walk on water. The others, they weren't invited to the top of Mount Tabor. They didn't see Moses and Elijah. They didn't hear the Father's voice. Maybe they can hear peace be with you and your peace can be for them, but it can't be for me. I'm different. And God, he says to each one of us, I love you. And you hear that and you might think, yeah, maybe God might love them. But Father Josh, not me. I mean, I've been in discipleship. I've been formed. 
I've had encounters with God. I've gone on retreats and pilgrimages. Like God can't love me the way he can love them. It's different. I've been formed for years and I'm still making the same mistakes. I still have the same feelings. I still have those same messed up desires that I wish I didn't have. Maybe God can say that about them, but he can't say I love you to me. And so what does Peter do? Peter, he says, I'm going fishing. What he was doing was he was saying, I'm going away. I'm going to go back to my former way of life. I'm not cut out for this discipleship stuff. And he goes back to fish and others follow him. He walks away again. And what does Jesus do when Peter walks away again? They just say, okay, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with you, Peter. This is it. No, Jesus goes after Peter again. And it says that Peter, while he was fishing, he was stripped. And whenever Jesus came to Peter, Peter, he went to go see Jesus, but he put his clothes back on. He covered himself back up. What does that remind you of? Who does that remind you of? The garden, Adam and Eve. They sinned against God, and and what happened? They ran away from God, and God ran to them. And when God came to them, they covered themselves up. They didn't want to be vulnerable. They were scared. And so what does Jesus do with Peter as he's clearly vulnerable and scared? Jesus pulls him aside and brings him by a campfire, a place where Peter denied him. And then Jesus walks with Peter one-on-one. He doesn't expose Peter to shame. And he, he asks Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, you know I love you. He asks him again, do you love me? You know I love you. Peter, do you love me? You know I love you. Whenever he said this, He was asking Peter in the Greek, do you love me with unconditional love? And Peter said, it's friendship love, Jesus. And Jesus said, do you love me with unconditional? Peter said, it's friendship in the Greek. The third time Jesus says, well, Peter, can you love me with the friendship love? Peter says, Lord, you know I love you with the friendship love. What is Jesus doing with Peter? He's saying, Peter, whatever you can give me, I'm willing to take. What is it you can give me right now? I'm not exposing the shame. I'll take whatever you want to give. And Jesus, he invites you and I as well to also be vulnerable with him, to not come covered up. He is coming to us this evening. He is coming to us tonight in the Blessed Sacrament. He will be available to us in Eucharistic adoration, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And he comes to us and he invites us to be vulnerable with him, to be exposed to him as he is exposed with us. And just like with Peter, he was willing to receive whatever Peter was willing to give, he is willing to receive whatever you and I are willing to offer him tonight. So when the Lord Jesus Christ comes tonight in adoration, in about 10 minutes, I want to invite us to vulnerably share with Jesus because Jesus received Peter and he stayed with Peter. And because Peter stayed with Jesus, Peter is now Saint Peter. And if we can give our hearts to Jesus, if we can give our wounds to Jesus, if we can give our sins to Jesus, then we too can become the saints that Jesus invites us to be.